Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 57. In making electrochemical measurements, we always are comparing the potential of some test cell of interest uh, against the potential of some reference cell. Electrical measurements are always done against a convenient standard reference. We are not able to measure the potential of a half cell by itself. It, it can't be done. But with the correct reference electrode, measurements made by different researchers under different conditions can be compared. When it comes to reference electrodes, the right place to start is with what is known as the standard hydrogen electrode with the acronym SHE. The half reaction, written as a reduction, is that of aqueous hydronium ions picking up electrons to form H2 gas. To be the standard hydrogen electrode, the hydrogen gas must be present at one atmosphere and the hydronium ion must be at a concentration of one molar. In practice, it looks something like this. And yes, you can purchase one commercially. This half cell is unique among half cells because this is the cell all others are compared to. This reaction is the anchor around which all other cell potentials are tabulated. This reaction has the standard reduction potential assigned the value of zero volts exactly. This is an assigned conventional value. The table of standard reduction potentials is created, at least conceptually, by connecting this half cell to the negative, or black, input of a voltmeter. And this would be the anode side, so we are considering its function as an oxidation. It still has the assigned potential of zero volts. Then any and all other half cells are connected to the red, or positive side of the voltmeter. The voltage recorded on the voltmeter is assigned as the potential of the test half cell. If that half cell has been formed with standard conditions, such as gases at one atmosphere and solutes at one molar, then it is the standard reduction potential for that cell. The table of standard reduction potentials is formed by placing each test cell formed using standard conditions in sequence and connecting it to the positive terminal of the voltmeter. The reading is the standard reduction potential for that test cell. So here's our testing setup. The reference SHE electrode is connected to the negative input of the voltmeter. First we test the gold plus cell. We measure plus 1.69 volts. We assign that to the standard reduction potential of the gold 1 plus gold metal redox couple. Then we connect the copper 2 plus cell. We measure plus 0.339 volts and assign that to its standard reduction potential, its uh, SRP. Then we connect the nickel 2 plus cell and measure minus 0.236 volts. This is now its SRP value. Finally, we connect the samarium 3 plus cell, measure minus 2.304 volts, and assign its SRP value. Going on in this manner and placing the SHE itself in the middle at zero volts creates the table of standard reduction potentials. But while the SHE is such a critical reference electrode, it is seldom actually used in practice. It is hard to set up, though when done correctly, it is stable and reliable. But you have hydrogen gas bubbling into the room. It risks creating an explosion hazard. You have to be careful not to tip it over. Just difficult to work with, especially when compared to some of the other reference electrodes available. Now, it's a shame that the word standard and the word saturated both begin with the letter S. While SHE is for standard hydrogen electrode, SCE is for saturated calomel electrode. And that, that's just the way it is. Calomel is the chloride of the mercurous ion HG2Cl2. As a redox process, the mercury ions can be reduced to metallic liquid mercury. Both calomel and mercury are in condensed phases so that their activity is always just one. This is one of the things that makes this a stable electrode and useful as a reference. As it reacts, converting calomel into mercury or mercury into calomel, the potential is unaffected by those changes. The only effect it has is through the chloride concentration. And so it is possible to build the cell with the chloride concentration at one molar. This would then be the standard conditions and we would call it the standard calomel electrode. But under operating conditions, the chloride concentration could slowly drift away from the exactly one molar value and change its potential slightly. If instead we introduce some solid KCl, enough to saturate the solution with KCl and, and then have some solid left over, then reactions over time may shift the amount of KCl present, but the solution concentration would always be that of the saturated solution. So this is even an even more stable electrode. Here's a schematic of such an electrode. It is complex to build, but is available commercially. It is a bit more robust and user-friendly than the SHE. 
When being used as a reference electrode, it is connected to the negative terminal of the voltmeter, just like the SHE was. The test electrode is connected to the positive side. The voltage we read would be reported as being some voltage with respect to SCE. For example, we connect the copper 2 plus electrode to the test side of the voltmeter. When the SHE is in the reference position, we measure plus 0.339 volts. We can call this the standard reduction potential of the copper 2 plus copper redox couple. And it is found in tables exactly with this value. But what if we were using the saturated calomel electrode as a reference electrode? Well, the measured voltage would change to plus 0.098 volts. Now, there's nothing wrong with reporting that this is the standard reduction potential, and standard is referring to the test electrode, which is under standard conditions, for the copper 2 plus copper with respect to the SCE reference electrode. You will actually find in the literature a lot of work reported where all of the numbers measured are given with respect to some reference electrode that is different than the SHE. But if you ever wanted to convert your potentials to those relative to SHE, you would need to add back in the potential of the reference electrode relative to SHE. Now there's another very convenient reference electrode. The silver silver chloride electrode is very useful because it is rather easily prepared in the lab. It's also readily available commercially. One of its design virtues is that both oxidation states of silver are in the solid phase with unit activity, again making for a stable half-cell potential. When measured against the SHE reference, its standard reduction potential is plus 0.222 volts. As with the calomel electrode, a more stable reference potential can be achieved using a saturated KCL solution. In that case, the measured potential is plus 0.197 volts. Both cells are available. In fact, you'll <clears throat> be able to find them with several different additional chloride concentrations. The manufacturer would guarantee a certain reference potential volt voltage. It's just use it as a reference electrode, just like the SCE. Take the voltmeter and connect a reference electrode in the usual fashion. Let's start again with the SHE. Connect the standard copper copper 2 plus half cell in the test position. We again observe the measured potential to be plus 0.339 volts. We assign that value to the reduction process for the copper 2 plus copper couple. Again, that is what's in the tables. But if we use the silver silver chloride saturated KCL electrode as the reference half cell, we instead measure plus 0.142 volts. And there's nothing wrong with reporting this number as the copper 2 plus copper standard reduction potential with respect to silver silver chloride which is saturated with KCL. If we need its value against the SHE, we add back in the silver silver chloride potential versus SHE. Thinking these, these reference uh, electrodes are commonly used in experimental electrochemical work. When thinking about the measured potentials compared to the SHE, you might think of this kind of a graph. This is a number line of half cell reduction potential. The convention has assigned the standard hydrogen electrode to the value zero. We can measure all other half cells against this one. For example, the copper copper 2 plus couple is found here. We want to measure it relative to the SHE, plus the SHE in the reference position, which is the negative or black terminal of the voltmeter. Connect the copper to the test terminal, the red or positive terminal of the voltmeter. The measured potential is the difference between these two potentials. The voltmeter measures the difference in potential between the red and the black terminals. Because of how we have connected them, we are therefore measuring the difference between the test and the reference half cells. Now our usual mantra is cathode minus anode, and while that is how we have them connected in this case, the process is reversed with half cells more negative than SHE, so this mnemonic is less helpful. In any case, we measure plus 0.339 volts. If we replace the copper couple with the nickel nickel 2 plus couple, we now measure a negative potential of minus 0.236 volts. Or we might put the tin 2 plus tin 4 plus couple in the test position. It would give us a potential difference of plus 0.139 volts. Let's create a little table of these results. Here are the relevant reduction reaction equations, and these are the measurements when using the SHE as the reference cell. Now redo all of these measurements, but using the saturated calomel electrode as reference. Here is where the SEC, SCE is located in this number line. Here's the measurement with the standard copper couple, the measurement with the nickel couple, and the measurement against the tin reaction. Note how that this time the tin reaction is negative, but it's with respect to SCE. The tin reaction hasn't moved. It's the reference state that is changing. Put this data 
up into the table. The thermodynamics of these reactions has not changed just the reference state. The difference in standard cell potential between copper and nickel is the same regardless of the reference electrode being used. Finally, let's make the measurements using the silver-silver chloride reference cell. It's located here on this graph. Copper potential is found to be plus 0.142 volts with this new reference cell. The nickel potential is measured as minus 0.433 volts. And finally, the tin reaction has a cell potential measured to be minus 58 millivolts. To complete the table then, we put in these values. As you can see, any reference state will do. We can convert measurements between different reference states by adding the different twin states. Our uh, tables are based on using the SHE. Experimentally, researchers often use one of the more convenient reference electrodes and convert the numbers if needed, but often they're only interested in the difference between the measurements they make, and so it does not matter which reference electrode is used as long as it is the same one.